Well, hey, it's great to be back. Um, I was in Nicaragua this week, and I have Spanish going through my head. Yo tengo español en mi cabeza. Well, and, and I was actually in an earthquake this week. It was a uh, 6.7, and it was uh, about 1.40 in the morning, and I was on the fourth floor of a nice hotel that was made for earthquakes, thank goodness. But it was seriously like waves were going through my bed on the fourth floor. It was, it was wild. Uh, we all ended up in the parking lot after that for, for a while, kind of just waiting to make sure it was okay. Uh, but it was a powerful week <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> and I want to thank you uh, for praying. We ministered and just saw how the Lord touch many, many pastors there in, in Nicaragua and uh, taking what we have here at Convergence. I tell them stories about things that God does here um, as examples uh, for them and for unity in a region. And it was uh, such a powerful, such a powerful morning. So this morning, I just want to I want to kick off right from the start and just tell you what we're here to talk about. So so you're not out there. You're not out there wondering um, that we're talking this morning about Andrew and Emily taking the role of senior leader here at Convergence. And uh, Marcy and I are, are still going to be here. We're stepping into a role, a more apostolic role, and uh, this is still our home, um, and I'm still going to be on staff. We'll tell you some more details uh, coming up of, of how we think this season looks, and uh, we're, we're very excited about this. Um, you know, like, but like I said, we're not, we're not leaving. Um, some of the language that's been used before, I was thinking, well, sometimes we say we're not going anywhere, but then for me as an apostolic person, that kind of, I'm like, no, I'm going all over the world. <laughs> but, but we're going to be here and uh, this is our base. And uh, we're very excited, though, about this transition. We believe it's a double portion season that we're getting the old and the new in this season. And uh, so we are, are really encouraged about that. Uh, that We have an amazing team at Converge. Could we give our team a hand? You know, I'm, I'm just so, so proud of our staff and, and the team that we have here, and we believe we have momentum. There's so many things that God has been doing, places he's been taking us in the spirit, and uh, over the last few years, we've, we've been walking through this transition, and it, it's been a great process. I love the way things have flowed. Um, there have been mind maps, timelines, Gantt charts, in the midst of <laughs> organic, what are you saying, Lord? We'll all lay this down in a moment. And so I really love the convergence of kind of the, the, the organization and all the planning. And yet, Lord, whatever you say, if any person in this process feels at any time that this isn't you, we'll just lay it down. And it's been a, it's been a beautiful, a beautiful process. And uh, it's been a joy to be a part of it, the conversations, the, the prayers, everyone's willingness to just lay it down, prayers with the elders on our knees. I love this church, <laughs> and I love being a part of a house that wants to hear God above all else. And it, that's such a beautiful, a beautiful thing. And I don't want to ever take that for granted because you say, well, isn't, isn't that the way church is supposed to be? Well, it isn't always that way. And I, I'm thankful to be a, a part of a house where, where it really is, really is that way. So this morning we want to talk some about that journey, about uh, how, we, how we got to this place. Um, you know, in 2016, Andrew preached his first sermon here. And uh, he had gone through our ministry school and every school we've had um, since he was zero. Um, he chose to come to Convergence when he was uh, about a month and a half old. 
think it was a good choice. <laughs> and uh, so, but in December of 2018, I was sitting over here on the front row, and uh, Andrew was preaching, and you know, he he'd preached several times, and he was preaching on tithing and stewardship, and and people were clapping. And I looked over at Marcy, and I was like, people don't clap when I preach on this. <laughs> we were kind of like, what is, what is happening here? And uh, I, saw, I saw a mantle come on Andrew. And I recognized at that point that what was happening through Andrew in that moment was more than just good preaching. But I saw a mantle of authority in the house. And, and for me, that was the moment I knew. And of course, with that, there were going to be many prayers, conversations. And if, you know, if I heard or saw wrong, I would totally lay it down. But, but for me, that was, a, that was a key moment in this process. And so I shared with the elders, and we began to pray more intently um, about this. And we began in that time, a transition process, and begin to walk this out, begin to walk it out with the staff. You know, so much of what goes on here um, happens not just because of us, but because we have an amazing team. Um, And our job, my job as senior leader, is mainly really leading a team that leads others. And so the transition with the team begin to take place. Andrew began to do one staff meeting a month, and this meeting, he, he began to lead our executive team. And now I would say at this point that Andrew right now is leading about 70 to 80 percent of the staff leadership things that, that happen uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we've developed a great preaching team, and I, I love the preaching team. Uh, that we have right now. And I love being a part of a church that has a preaching team, Um, that it's not just one one or two gifts that are manifesting in the house, but because we have a preaching team, uh, so many other gifts can manifest. And uh, so one of the things that, that has been really important to us, though, is that Andrew never feel pressure in this process. Um. I grew up with a dad who's a pastor, and <clears throat> I can say that never once, never once did I feel pressure to do this. And I went off to university uh, to work on computer programming. And uh, my dad, he, you know, he had things in his heart about it all, but he never... He was right with me in that, and God encountered me and gave me the desire to do this when I encountered the presence of the Lord, and I never, ever uh, felt pressure from my father, and so that's been something that's been really important to Marcy and myself, is that there's, there, there be no pressure absolutely in this process. So this last year in 2021, Andrew and I mirrored each other, and uh, we were both full-time leaders here. We met every week and, and just began to mirror and talk through every different dimension of the ministry here, and, and it was wonderful. <laughs> um, and not that we're going to stop doing that, um, but the intentionality of this year I really love. So it's been really about the last three years that we've been in this process with the elders, the microchurch leaders, staff, and uh, it's been a great journey. Yeah, so it's been so amazing to walk this process out with our leaders. We have a church full of leaders. Um, So we have staff, we have elders, we have microchurch pastors, and we have many other of you who serve and lead and facilitate in different areas of ministry and what we do here. Um, we have so many amazing leaders, and we've been able to walk this out with our leaders in such a beautiful 
powerful way. We've had help from the outside as well. Michael Brodeur, who's like a pastor's coach, he walks a lot of people through these kinds of things. He's been um, a voice and a support to us through this entire process. So there's such a strength in being able to do this together. And so we wanted you to hear from a couple of those people. So Shannon Wilkes is one, come on up, is one of our microchurch pastors. Woohoo! And he's going to share, he's going to share because he's been a part of this process and he has articulated things so well so many times. I'm like, you need to have a voice this morning. Good morning, church. I'm Shannon Wilkes. For those of you I haven't met, my wife Jane and I have been here over seven years. This has been our home. And we've been microchurch pastors for over five years, I think. We just love our microchurch. They just support us, and we just, we have the best microchurch, okay? <laughs> but you know, when we first came here, we sit back there in the back row, and we come out of a, another situation, a little bit of an unhealthy church that imploded, and we were kind of wounded and kind of beat up, and we weren't really good for anything, and we sat there for about two years. And God poured out his love on us and surrounded us with people in this church. And he nurtured us into health and back into being strong and healthy. And so for that, we are, we're very grateful. And, and I see people here that have been here for 50 years, 28 years. And over, you know, Walt's been here for 25. Walt and Kelly and I have been here for 25 years. And we all agree that we have something special at Convergence. It's really special. Steve was right. You don't get this everywhere. But it's not, well, it's not special just because of Steve and Marcy. It's special because of the presence of the Lord. And it's, pre it's special because we come with a hunger and a thirst to be closer to God. That's what makes it special. And God moves in that situation. And God breathes life into our homes, into our families, into our businesses because we're seeking after him. You've given the microphone to a salesman. <laughs> I will be, if you let me, I will stand here for 20 or 30 minutes and talk. And, and, but I know that's not, was well, not the intention. So I, I made a few notes to keep myself on track. And I asked Jane if she wanted to look at my notes, and she said no, because if I have any changes, you won't like them. And We're also thrilled that our daughter Kennedy is here visiting from Austin this weekend. So I have a few thoughts and observations I want to share with you. I'm very excited about this new season at Convergence, and I'll tell you why. I've been listening to Andrew preach and share his heart. When I say Andrew, I mean Andrew and Emily. You did a wonderful job last week. You were just so comfortable. You are just so. I've been listening to Andrew preach and share his heart and his passion for Christ and for convergence and for each of us to know our identity in Christ. And one thing I can say with certainty about Andrew is that he preaches the gospel. He is thoughtful. He's intentional. He cares for others, and he preaches the gospel. He is transparent, he is genuine, and he's authentic. And did I mention that he preaches the gospel? I mean, that, when you boil it all down, that's what it's about. Somebody who will get into the word of God and ask God to reveal new things in his heart, from his word. And then he imparts that to us. And that's what we want. That's what we want. Steve and Marcy have done an amazing job stewarding convergence for over 30 years. And the favor and anointing that they walk in is too obvious to anyone with a pulse. But I see an anointing on Andrew that is different. 
I think it is an anointing that is specifically for the purpose of leading us into the next season that God has for us as a church. And more importantly, that anointing is for the people in our city who have not yet walked through those doors. I shared this the other night, and I, th and I thought I would share it again. I'm reminded of the words of Sir Isaac Newton when he stated, If I have been able to see farther than others, it is because I stood on the shoulders of giants. Steve and Marcy have built an incredible legacy here, mainly by doing one thing. That's by going after God and seeking him and pressing into him. That is the godly example that is Andrew's heritage. And he gets to stand on that legacy. And he, he carries the same undeniable characteristic of always going after God. And that is someone that I can wholeheartedly endorse and follow. So Andrew, I charge you to preach the gospel in season and out of season. To lead with love and compassion and to seek godly counsel. And most importantly, always go after all. God. God bless you and your family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shannon. Oh, don't you just feel like we have such a rich church? I love it. Okay, and uh, Jason and Kim are also going to share, just they've been such an integral part of this journey um, as staff pastors. We wanted them to share as well. I wanted to get up here next to Andrew and just stand behind him literally and figuratively. Um, I just, I, you know, I feel, like, um, I feel like everybody who's here probably really likes Andrew. Um, I don't think you'd come back in here and preach week after week if you didn't, right? But, but you don't always necessarily get to see him in the day-to-day, week-to-week. And so I want to say who he is here is who he is back there in staff when we have staff meeting and when, we're, when we go to lunch together. He doesn't, there's an authenticity about him that, um, that, that I, I want to endorse. <laughs> and... Um, I really, I really appreciate you, Andrew, and um, I appreciate the way that you guys have handled all of this with a high level of transparency. Um, I mean, I've never been a part of a transition like this before, um, but, you know, I, I don't think this happens this way. I don't think this is normal. <laughs> I'm all about not normal. <laughs> if this is what not normal is, I'm all about it, because it's, it's happened gradually, and it's happened with an amazing level of transparency. There's no surprises here. I'm actually going to get out of here so I can see you, see your face. Um, and and I so appreciate that uh, about you and about how all of everyone has has handled it, and all of the staff have handled it with grace and and uh, a high level of trust. Um, we've built we've built a level of trust on our on our staff that um, that I also think is unique, and so we <laughs> we're not approaching this as as something that's like with great trepidation. It's like no, we we trust we trust Steve and Marcy, we trust Andrew and Emily, and and we trust because we've been made a part of the process. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'll, I'm not a salesman, but I can talk for 20 minutes too. I just want to say one of the reasons why it makes it like trust is easy because Andrew really makes a point of honoring. He walks in honor and he knows how to honor other people. And as somebody that's been on staff for a while and is older, to have someone younger come in and know how to walk in honor instead of let's change everything and do everything a new way and like that's huge and I have, I've known Andrew since he was, well, at least I remember I did a children's choir when you were in first grade, you know, <laughs> so before I ever had kids, and so just like watching you, like over the years, and choosing the Lord over and over again, and choosing to grow in the Lord, and pursuing without letting up, 
in all the different seasons of life, pursuing is really huge. And so there's like so many reasons for high level of trust and just comfortabil- comfortability and mm-hmm. and really just, I just it's, it's a good thing. So I want to say one more thing. Um, I, I, what I appreciate so much is that you know who you are because you know whose you are. And, and I think that that is one of the, one of the strongest things, why, why you're able to, to watch, walk with such humility um, as you lead. You lead with a great sense of humility, and I think it's because you know who you are and you know whose you are. And, um, and that identity um, just, again, just creates a great level of trust and uh, safety for our, for our staff and ultimately for our, our body. Appreciate that. Bless you guys. Thank you so much. Now, Andrew and Emily are going to share a little bit of their hearts, their journey. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I just want to echo what everyone said about my husband Um, (laughs) because I just want to share, too, that who you guys see is also who he is at home. Um, I always, when someone asks me to describe Andrew, I always say he's the kindest human you'll ever meet. And he just genuinely, he carries the pastor's heart, and he genuinely cares about each one of you that walks into this room. He cares about the city. He cares about this church. He cares about the staff. He just cares. And so he, this decision is not a light decision. And something that we've talked about for many years. And um, I also just want to echo, too, that, like, this relationship between the four of us is really beautiful and healthy, too. And um, it's really unique. Um, You know, not everyone has the healthiest relationship with their in-laws. But... We just truly love and adore each other and um, walk closely together. And it's not just ministry, but it's also family. And so, um, you know, these decisions have been talked about and not taken lightly. So I just wanted to say that too. But in 2020, um, one day in August, Andrew was preaching. And I don't know what he was preaching on. I don't remember. But I remember that day sitting on the front row And as he was preaching, listening to everyone else, like, echo and just, like, be really, just, like, really receive what he was saying. And the way that he looked on the stage, like, he just was beaming. He was sharing his heart. And the church was just responding. And I just looked up at him, and I'm like, this is what he's supposed to do. This really is. Like, this is his heart, this is what makes him come alive, and, you know, I don't know the timing, but I know at some point, like, this is it, and so we actually went on a date that night, and I shared that with him, and that was just a monumental moment for us, and for our marriage, and just, you know, fully coming into alignment of, you know, doing this, um, not sure, you know, not sure when, what the timing looked like, but just knowing that, um, you know, that my heart was fully in it. So. Thank you. Wow. So many things on my heart to share. Uh, I think salesmen, but also pastors, we can, we can be kind of lengthy sometimes. Um, I, late last year, or early this year, we were looking through some of the archives of some of the old documents and things we had here at the church, and um, we just happened to find an article of my granddad, Roy J. Fish, who pastored, um, no, didn't pastor, but taught at the seminary here, Southwestern, for 46 years, and it turns out he had actually been interim pastor of a church called James Avenue Baptist in 1966. 1966, and that was one of those moments for me um, when I think about being third generation, like the weight of that, the the beautiful weight of that, Um, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not going to preach. I could preach on that, but I'm not going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Wesley do it next week. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, but, but really, though, like, my granddad was interim pastor here. My dad, obviously, and the legacy, the inheritance, what he has established here, and just getting an opportunity to take hold and, and, and to continue something that's actually been part of my family's legacy. Uh, it's, it's part of our inheritance. Just is something that's really wrecked me. And for everyone out there that, you know, you're like, you, maybe you grow up, you know exactly what you want to be when you grow up. Um, that was not my journey. Um, I went to school, got my Bachelor's of Business Administration degree from Dallas Baptist University and was like, all right, I'm trudging straight ahead and I know what I'm doing. In fact, um, before that even, I was trying to, to decide what I was doing with my life and I was completely signed up to go to college, literally was buying the textbooks when I, I felt like the Lord said, you need to meet and actually look at going to ministry school here at Convergence. And I was like, Lord, I, I just need to go to college. I just need to go to school. And through a series of circumstances, I ended up going to that to ministry school here. And that is, that is the time. It was back in 2011 when the Lord said, I've called you to full-time ministry. Now, I'm going to be honest with you this morning. I didn't want to do full-time ministry. Part of that is the pastor's kid journey. It's beautiful and amazing, but it also, you kind of grow up. If, if you've ever grown up, kids, you probably know what I'm talking about. All of us know what we're talking about. Like, do you want, you know, do I want to do the same thing that my parents did? That question kind of flows, flows through you. And I remember this moment. I was in this building, and the Lord said, I want you, I want you to step into full-time ministry. This is what I have for your life. This is the calling. And I actually do want you, like, I, I want you to not say that you don't want to fall in your father's footsteps because what your father has built and what he's stewarded is beautiful. It's amazing. And that was a moment for me when I knew full-time ministry is what I was called to. And that's been something that I've been walking out for, for a long time. I've been in this church for 32 years. I know we've already said that. I accepted the Lord when I was five years old underneath the pew in the, in the other building. We, this was a parking lot. It was a parking lot back then. In the back of that building. And so just like the, the, the history that I have personally had here has been unbelievable. And I think it's one thing to grow up in the church. It's one thing to be a pastor's kid. It's one thing for, for this, you know, for that to just kind of be your life. It's another thing when you're a pastor's kid and yet you're in a place that you can, you have family, you have community, and you encounter Jesus. Like, you encounter Jesus. I could remember being in a, a circle when I was 13 years old down at the other building and a bunch of us were circled up and all of a sudden the power of the Holy Spirit hit and we all began to speak in tongues out loud. I can remember standing back in the sound booth just about seven feet back from where Josh is right now at a conference here being unable to move under the weight of the power and the glory of God. I remember sitting over there, close to where Jay is sitting, and I was sitting right over there, and the Lord said to me, this is your life verse, Jeremiah 29, 13, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. So it's moments like this, encounters with Jesus that have led me here, pure and simple, like encounters with the living God. It's what we're all about, and I, I just, that is my heart, like, I would not be here this morning if it weren't for this church's pursuit of the one thing. Because my life is living proof that I am marked by that. 
I am marked by that. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've walked in the foyer and someone's come up to me and they're like, you're not like other pastor's kids. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, we know a lot of pastor's kids and they're just running from God. And that's a testament to, one, it's a huge testament to my parents. It's a huge testament to the way that I was raised. But it's also a huge testament to this church's pursuit of the one thing. Because let me tell you, you can be raised in church and not not have that one pursuit. Not come out of the place with that feeling of like, I have seen the Lord, right? Right? It's changed my life. It's not just good preaching. Man, I love good preaching. I'm a pastor. I love to preach. But let me tell you, words are meaningless and fruitless if there's not power, if there's not authority, and if there's not encounter with the living God. And that one thing has changed and altered the course of my life. It's altered the course of our marriage like that one thing, that one thing, and that one thing is one of the big reasons why this is a handoff in this manner because my life was marked. And so I say this long-winded thing to say that I love this church. Like I have a deep conviction and love for this body for this church, for what we've been pursuing, what, what my parents have led for 32 years. And I just, I just, this phrase just keeps popping in my mind right now, and it's, we're just getting started. Like, we're just getting started. Some of you, I, I love what Shannon said. Like, we have, we have people in this church that have been here for 50 years. We have people that have been here for three months. And I just want you to know, regardless of where you're at on that span or that timeline, we're just getting started. We're just getting started. And that's, that's just a, that's what's burning in my heart. And I got to pass the mic before I start preaching. But I just really feel that burning. Yeah, I love that because it was an encounter with God that brought Steve into ministry. <laughs> It was encounters with God that brought Andrew in, into ministry. It's encountering Jesus is the vision statement of this church. Yeah. It's what we're all about. People all over this region and all over the world will say as part of their story, I can tell you where I was on the floor of convergence when I encountered Jesus. Yeah. And it changed my life. Yeah. So that's what we're all about. And I love that that's what it came to. And that is, out of all the things we could say this morning, that's really it <laughs> right there. So if, we, if, if you had no other reason of all the other amazing things, that would be enough right there. <laughs> so quickly, I'm going to go over some quick just details, okay? So what is Andrew's role? He will be the senior leader. He and Emily will be the senior leaders he will lead the staff, lead the executive team, and he will become an elder. What will Emily's role be? Emily will lead alongside Andrew. She will not be on staff in this season, but she will be helping with vision and decisions and involved in preaching and communicating with the staff and becoming more involved um, with the staff. What will Steve's role be? apostolic elder and leader so steve will continue to father um, both of us will father and mother here father and mother our team um, steve will continue to be an elder um, he will expand his role in involvement with our city which will bring amazing things um, opportunities for our church and our involvement with our city he will continue preaching. He will do leadership coaching and apostolic training. And he'll still sit right there. So, <laughs> yes, you do. You're very protective of your chair. <laughs> I can give up my chair. Wow. He loves his spot. What will Marcy's role be? Apostolic leader, mother, 
preach. I will not be on staff anymore. <laughs> um, and I also, um, I partner with Nikki Kamali in leading prophetic ministry, and I will continue uh, to do that as well. If you haven't been to our once a month prophetic training on Wednesday nights, you need to come. I'm just saying, it's amazing. All right, what will change? I will transition off staff by the end of May, and Steve will become part-time staff by the end of June. We'll develop more of our apostolic ministry, and that will, uh, like I said, open up more opportunities, actually, for all of us. Steve will take on a more fathering role, as I said, and then I will take on a more mothering role. What will not change is what I've already said. We, we're not going anywhere. We're not leaving. We will continue to be here. Oh, yeah, we're going everywhere. But we're not leaving Convergence. <laughs> Steve will continue to be on staff. He'll still be involved in decision-making and preaching and eldering. And we will remain involved with our microchurch pastors. We meet with them once a month, and it's amazing. Okay, this is the part that I get really excited about. What does the future look like? I want to stop for a minute and just say that these are really amazing questions that actually Brandon Balance emailed and said, hey, here's some questions I think would be really important for you to address to the church. And it really was so helpful. So this is... He, he really provided a great structure for this. So, what does the future look like? All right. Good. So, we'll be formally making this transition on Sunday, June the 12th. And we'll, we'll pray over Andrew then. And it's going to be a really great time. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, sometime later in the year, we'll get in some of our friends from the outside to pray over us in our role in this season. But like Marcy said, we're still here. Um, I'll probably be preaching at least once a month or so. And uh, I believe in this transition that, how do I say it, that you're going to get even a better Stephen Marcy because you're going to get who we are in this season and not our just trying to do something we've done a lot, but I believe you're going to get who God has really called us to be and who we are now and not who we were 30 years ago, but who we are now. And I believe that as we are stepping into this place, that obviously it opens the way up for Andrew and Emily but we believe it also opens the way up for all of us to step into who we really are in this season and not just be who we were five years ago or two years ago. And uh, it's kind of like the thing of being a grandparent. Is anybody a grandparent here? Um, it's everything people say it is and more. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but... You don't know what you've missed if you've never really had a grandparent involved in your life. But when you experience it, a healthy relationship with a grandparent, you're like, wow, this is how it's really meant to be. And I believe, I believe that that is what um, is going to be happening with us in, the, in this season. And so we're stepping into more of who we are. Andrew and Emily are stepping into who they are. And can I just say how proud we are of them and uh, just their journey and our walking together and um, just seeking the Lord in this together. And, and, you know, so much of transition is having a lot of good conversations, honest conversations. And I love being in a culture where that's, that's welcome to have those conversations, not just the easy ones, but to have really hard conversations, and, and uh, that's, that's something that, that we do, and, and we, we've learned to do, and that's a welcome thing um, in our family, in our church family, and, and I so, so appreciate that. 
Um, why don't you share some of the prophetic confirmations? I know I said that one other time. But yeah, I do want to share that. This is really exciting, you guys. It really is. Because, listen, when God is in it, that's the whole point, right? And I, I can't stress enough also that we talk to a lot of people who've done transitions like this. We've, like I said, we've walked with Michael Brodeur, who's walked a lot of people through transitions like this. And most of the time when something like this happens, the parent will leave because it's like, well, we have to get out of the way in order for the son or daughter to rise up. But actually, we feel from the Lord that that is actually not the case. And Dan McCollum spoke to it when he was here, that it's not the old is back here and we come into the new. It's the old and the new come together for a double portion. That was the word he gave us. And that is what we believe is happening. And I cannot stress enough the value that we are doing this together. We don't feel like we have to get out of the way. They don't feel like we have to get out of the way. We feel like we come together for a double portion. And that's what God is doing in this. And that's what God's doing in our church. And it was crazy because actually Emily was just sh sharing with me. And I'm going to let her share it. But David Wagner called them in 2016 and gave them a word like before this ever started, but also listen to that because Steve just said earlier that he saw the mantle come on Andrew in what year? 2016. Oh. It was 2018. It was 2018, sorry. He first preached in 2016, so I thought that's yeah. when, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's still, <laughs> still it's good. still amazing. That David would see it. <laughs> so God was talking about it before we knew. That's always good. So in 2016, Andrew and I were just processing about moving out of Nashville and just really feeling that that's what the Lord wanted us to do. And I had this dream the night before David Wagner called us, and I was sitting around this table, and David Wagner came up to me in the dream, and he said, what are you still doing here? Why are you still in Nashville? And I was like, oh, okay, um, well, I don't know what's next, but I, this is, you know, when I had a dream. Well, David texted Andrew that day and was like, hey, can I call you guys? I have a prophetic word for you. And he, so he prophesied us moving back to Texas. And I'm going to, the word was really long, but I just want to share a few things. Um, he said, I feel like there's a change of direction when moving you guys back to Texas. Double doors, doors open for both of us in Texas. It's going to be ministry, generational, and international. He brought you out to bring you back in. Andrew, what your dad carries is coming on you like a double portion. <laughs> it's going to look different. You're going to move from working for your dad to working with your dad. It's a real season of legacy living legacy and demonstrating it to this generation and to the church about what it looks like. So it's going to show the church a true picture of a father and son working together. You're not going to lead in the same way, but in my way, in God's way. It's not a clone of something else, but it's a newness that you're going to carry. You have a pastor's heart to not just pastor people, but to pastor a city and a movement. Not just leading people and pastoring people, but leading and pastoring people in a move of God. You and Emily are going to speak together and minister together and be connected at the hip. Emily, you're still going to do nursing, but ministry is going to be a big deal. You'll be connected in ministry like never before. I was thinking about that word when I was getting dressed this morning, and I don't think I've looked at it in many years, but <laughs> I was like, I need to look through that, and I looked at it when I got to church, and I was like, oh my goodness, like double portion, legacy, all the things. Um, just really incredible that six years ago that, you know, David Wagner was, he prophesied this over us, and it's just, you know, it's been a process for a really long time, but really beautiful too. Yeah, so Speaking as a prophetic person, when God uses the same language, 
over and over, pay attention. <laughs> he said double portion six years ago. Dan McCollum came and said it's about double portion. Nikki in staff meeting were talking about this, and she suddenly says, guys, it's about double portion. So I'm just telling you that God is saying that, so we're going to walk into it. I believe that's what, what the response is from us this morning that we'll get to as we wrap up, that we are all stepping into double portion because God said so, right? So here's what happened also. Like, th this is just like um, a little bit of what God's been speaking. So Steve and I were in Redding, California in January. This pastor from Colorado, who is a friend of ours, he came up and said, I really feel like I need to pray for you. But he really doesn't pray for us. He really prays for Andrew. So he says, right, who's not there. So he says, your son has got this church. Convergence is going to the next level. You will see fruit in that church in coming years that you guys dreamed about seeing. Your son is going to bring it to pass. God is going to work through him. There's a revival mantle on him that's going to be a voice to the new generation. I see young people coming. I see a repopulation and an expansion of the church. The foundations you have sown of family, of prophecy, of revival, of kingdom, of worship, it's all going to the next level. It's going to be wider and bigger. This is what he says. Just saying can't make this stuff up. So then this girl comes up to me. She doesn't know my name. I don't know her name. We, do not, we have never met this girl. And she feels like she needs to pray for me. She starts asking me questions, but she doesn't let me answer them. She answers them. And this is what she says. Do you have any kids? Do you have any sons? An older son? Yes, it's the oldest son. There's a teaching anointing on him. He's going to be like the Lord is strengthening that gift in him. He's going to be batting it out of the ballpark. I see him being raised up. I see he's on a tipping point. And he has maybe been like kind of in the shadows, but the Lord's calling him up now. He's going to be using his voice a lot. He's going to be speaking I see men's ministry. I see him raising up fathers and mothers. And I bless the legacy that is coming through him. So this girl doesn't know us at all and starts seeing Andrew. So this is what's been happening to us. Like people pray for us and they don't really pray for us. <laughs> they pray for Andrew, <laughs> who they've never seen, never met. He's not there. So I'm just saying, you can't make this stuff up, you guys. You really can't. So we're going to um, let Andrew share anything else that's on his heart. And then we just feel to, um, for all of us to just step into this double portion. So after Andrew shares, then uh, the staff, oh, and after Steve shares some more. Then the staff and the elders and um, microchurch pastors are all going to come up and in anyone else who wants to, and we're just going to do this. I mean, Jesus. Um, I mean, I could say a lot. I think, I think, yeah, man. I think the Lord is, is, is continuing to call this church to be a forerunner church. I think we're pioneering something. And you know, we don't talk about this a ton, but uh, the name convergence, it means things coming together. It's like the intersection of things. And the Lord was talking to me about that this morning. I was getting ready and I was like, what, what, what's happening, Lord? And he was like, everything is converging. It's like this convergence. And we, we've, we've always been this way, like the convergence of the word, the convergence of the spirit, the prophetic worship, prayer, like everything, and I'm like transforming the city. It's all coming together, and it's this convergence, and I just, my heart is just like, we're going to continue to go after that. 
we're going to go after that, and we're going to, we're going to get louder. You know, we we we've done a lot in our city. We've done amazing things in our city. But I'm just telling you, we're get, we we're going to get louder. Yeah. We're going to get louder in Fort Worth. We're going to actually see a city transformed. We're not just going to talk about it. We're not just going to talk about it. That's the reason why we're doing worship in the city. We're not doing worship in the city so we can have this great pep rally in the middle of Fort Worth. We're doing it so the city shifts. Culture changes. Why? Because I am the light of the world. Oh, man. It's 11.57. I, I think that's just my heart. Like, all morning I've been hearing that Ephesians 4. I think it's verse 24 that says, put on the new self in the likeness of God. And this whole morning, I'm like, Lord, what, what, what are you doing? And I just felt this thing, like even in worship, we're all putting on something new this morning. Like there's something new that we're all stepping into, the new self, not the old. Not, it's, it's, it's springboarding off of what the Lord has done, what he's going to continue to do. And there's something new that we're going to step into. And so we're just going to encounter Jesus and transform cities with his power and love. <laughs> That'll work right there. Wow. That's so good. Well, the grace of the Lord is on us to do this well. And you can, you can feel that in the room. And the verse I had is, Paul said, if you've heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me, for you. And what we're experiencing here, we're stewarding inheritance. We're stewarding the grace that God has given us. And that grace is empowering us for this transition to be an increase, an increase of momentum, a stepping into that double portion for all of us, all of us being called up higher. And so stewardship has been one of our key words for this year. It was one of the words that Andrew heard. And 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 so it really is that there's something God has given to us. And, and with that, there's, there's the blessing to do it, the stewardship of grace. But also there's like the fear of the Lord that when God speaks, we have to move and we have to act and we have to align with him. And, and Marcy and I, we, we feel that so strongly right now, just that... Uh, the Lord is calling us all, all up higher. So we just, we want to end this morning um, in just praying and blessing this transition. Like I said, on, on Sunday, June 12th, we're going to really pray and, and officially set Andrew and Emily in as senior leaders. Um, but we want to pray. We want to ask the, the, the staff to come on up, our elders, our microchurch leaders um, to come on up here. Surround us. Yeah. Steve Williamson, would you just come up here, Steve? And, uh, yeah. I, 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 I get, got this problem. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, when we started singing this morning, come, and it just hit me hard that we're go, we're, this is going to be a kingdom. Today is a kingdom step, a big kingdom step. And I heard the Lord remind me of the scripture verse. He said, he said to his disciples, do not fear. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And we're the kingdom church. And you know what's happening right now? We've, something's been built here. God's been building it. And we're not, we're not here anymore to just contain it, but to give it away. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for what you're building. Thank you for the prophetic word. Yes. The, you, you orchestrated this, Lord. You orchestrated this. And you will perform it. So, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for the double portion. We bless the double portion. We say yes to the double portion. We say yes to your 
plans, Lord, fully. And, and we just say, y'all just join us. Put your hands forward, please. We will not fear. We will not fear, for the Lord is with us. The Lord is leading us. We will not fear. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this house. God, you are the comforter. You're our guide. You're the great shepherd. And we thank you, Lord, that you're leading us. Lord, you brought each one of us in this house together under this leadership. And Lord, we just bless our leaders right now. God, we pray that you would cover them with your peace, with your joy. We pray that this season will just be filled with laughter and joy at the excitement of the kingdom and what you're doing, God. We bless them. We are for them. We are behind them because, Lord, we know that they are following you. Lord, we bless what is taking place today. And we know that what's taking place today, Lord, started years ago. We thank you for the words, Lord God, that have uh, been given to indicate where your heart is and where you're leading our church. And Lord, I hear that uh, word that your uh, word is a light to our feet. And Lord, that light motions us forward. It never takes us backward. It motions us forward. And what's forward for convergence, Lord, is what you are blessing today. And we thank you for that, God. And we look uh, forward to what you are doing uh, in these weeks and months and years to come. Yeah, I just feel like we all need to step into double portion. So let's stand up. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I'm all about responding. I think it's so significant and important that we intentionally respond. So I don't totally know what that means. I'm just inviting you to do whatever the Lord leads. If you just want to come up here just as a response to say, Yes, I'm stepping into double portion. Listen, this is double portion for Convergence Church. This is double portion for your life. This is double portion for your family. Because when God says it, He means it. And He's going to do it. And it's not just for one person. It's not just for our staff. It's not just for our elders. It's for the body of Christ. It's for the body of convergence, church, because God said it was. So right now, as convergence church, we say yes to the double portion. Yes. We step into the double portion. We step into the grace because obedience brings the grace. And as we step into obedience, there is grace and that means there is supernatural ability to do what we cannot do in our own natural ability. So we give you this church right now, Jesus, again, afresh, to do what we can't do in the natural. To do supernaturally that the power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells within us. And we will access our inheritance to the fullest measure. And we step into that double portion right now. And we thank you for what it looks like. And we thank you for the grace for it in Jesus' name. Maybe we should celebrate or something. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Yes. Wow. Wow.